early in the day. So I'm going to go to Zeb. Are you ready? You're with us already, Zeb? Perfect. You even have your own uh, screen set up and join. So Zeb is going to talk about participation of youth um, from NRC work. Thank you, Zeb. Go ahead. Yes. We can see your screen, fine, if you want to put it in presentation. Okay. The power. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, giving me time. Uh, this is Jan Zeb Daoud Zeb from Afghanistan, Camp Management Coordinator. Uh, let me give you a background of our uh, program as we are not uh, uh, like uh, following the uh, formal camp management here, but uh, we are using urban displacement out of camp approach uh, with um, people, displaced people living with house community uh, and renting and subsidized housing. Uh, which we really focus on area-based approach. Uh, and in the meanwhile, we have capital here, uh, informal settlements, uh, which are scattered and we are using uh, this approach here. Uh, in this session, we will be uh, looking for, for the volunteers participation of youth in uh, social and humanitarian activities, uh, camp management support to the youth uh, and challenges uh, uh, for uh, participation uh, of youth and humanitarian outcomes from this. And uh, we will, in the meanwhile, we will have some uh, question. If you have any question, you can put uh, them in the comment box. Tamanag uh, Barazada and Bilal uh, Nuri are with me uh, to support me uh, as this session will be a little shorter. Uh, so uh, they will answer uh, in the comments. And if we have time, so we'll take some question in the end. First, uh, in 2017, we started camp management in East uh, region of uh, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, so we uh, had uh, that uh, to establish committees, community representative committees. So it, uh, uh, it was a uh, chance for us to give participation to the youth. Uh, as uh, it is a traditional uh, culturally um, uh, system as uh, the uh, is it's a belief that uh, uh, that elders are only representing or they should represent the uh, community and uh, youth uh, doesn't know anything so uh, Abu Bakr who was uh, 22 years old uh, at that time and he uh, uh, got uh, highest uh, awards in that time and he was elected as a, a committee member he was educated as well I should mention that we uh, we consider here uh, youth from 18 to uh, 25. After this, we uh, found some uh, like uh, drug addiction uh, in informal settlement in Kabul uh, city. Uh, so we uh, tried to find uh, some examples or some uh, youth individual who were uh, like using uh, the uh, drug and then they recovered from that. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, we uh, together with the, those people, we conducted an event and they uh, told their stories and it was very uh, effective for the uh, people. After that, uh, in December 2019, uh, we had, it is not coronavirus situation, uh, the people are using masks and gloves, but it was a, a volunteer uh, working day. Uh, we encourage youth and other community members to collect uh, sol uh, solid waste uh, from the community and to keep the environment clean. In uh, uh, 17 uh, April, uh, uh, there was in the line of uh, the COVID-19 was a pandemic. At that time, it was one or two cases in Afghanistan, but we wanted to uh, be ready for the uh, situation. Therefore, we educated, uh, camp management educated for the community to distribute hygiene kits and WASH uh, had prepared 4,500 kits. And we had less time or a short time to distribute it. Then we found uh, some youth uh, from the uh, community. They helped us in, in preparing list and uh, uh, inviting or preparing the distribution uh, points in social and physical uh, distancing uh, during the distribution. And even they were uh, helping us in uh, unloading the uh, trucks. Uh, when the situation got on uh, like, uh, like uh, bad worse, so uh, we uh, try to uh, engage host community uh, youth as well uh, to help us to uh, make the situation a little better. Uh, 
so there were uh, a group of youth uh, who were disinfecting uh, the community. We supported them to uh, to disinfect uh, the uh, the space, uh, informal settlements. Uh, so we provided uh, some materials, and they. Uh, disinfected with the uh, community, uh, host community. In the meanwhile, the, uh, the displaced community uh, uh, people were also in, uh, like uh, encouraged to participate uh, in the awareness raising uh, campaign, uh, like uh, posters and other things. Uh, women and uh, girls were also uh, participating in this campaign. Uh, at the end, we uh, distributed appreciation letters to uh, in these events. Uh, youth were participating uh, in 1st October when the COVID-19 trend got a little bit uh, uh, down. So they uh, they conducted among uh, like we uh, with the community volunteers conducted an event and they uh, they are they are playing a role play to raise awareness or. Uh, to uh, about the rights of or, or respect of the elders. They also participated in the um, community projects. They need to learn the area that this should be uh, constructed or um, concreted. So uh, they identified. And <clears throat> uh, common management had, uh, because there was no uh, NGO or other uh, people or they, they didn't have the capacity. So common management uh, provided a fund uh, to uh, distribute or to, uh, to do this activity. And uh, community youth who were also uh, uh, like uh, encouraged from before, they participated in working uh, for free and uh, constructed or uh, this uh, area. Uh, we are uh, at the place of what were the barriers for youth uh, for participation. Uh, basically, uh, we didn't see any uh, any uh, barrier for uh, our own, uh, like for men uh, mostly, but for female, as uh, according to uh, the research uh, in 2019, uh, women in coordination. Anna Harish Holland. Uh, she also mentioned in his uh, paper that uh, men are more likely to work voluntarily, but uh, female, uh, female not. Therefore, we, in the youth, we also faced the same problem that women were uh, like very uh, much like they had, uh, they needed to get permission first, and then, and then they wanted to uh, do uh, these activities, and uh, they couldn't uh, find uh, uh, like uh, uh, not uh, doing any things. Like uh, some youth, like uh, in the previous example and this uh, example, there are youth who are working on Friday. Friday are mostly off here, uh, as they are headed household as well, and they are working for their uh, to feed their uh, families. But uh, they, uh, it was uh, difficult for them to uh, participate in these kind of activities and other activities, as they were busy to work uh, on daily wage and they should support their uh, family. But uh, at the end, we uh, found it uh, that they participated. They uh, they uh, has uh, they found a way that they can work on Friday and they uh, work together. Uh, based on the uh, our team's observations, that. Uh, uh, were not letting them. They were thinking that uh, youth are uh, like they are children. They cannot uh, understand uh, right and wrong. How they can represent their families or how they can uh, do the activities. Uh, so it was a challenge for us. But it take uh, it took time for us to raise awareness and to uh, build uh, the uh, the best line for them to to uh, to allow the uh, youth to participate in this kind of activities in, even in community structures. Uh, and for female, according to the uh, the research before I said Anna Harish Holland uh, has uh, taken, they uh, they didn't feel confidence uh, even somehow they couldn't participate in the uh, training. Uh, after uh, this, let's uh, come to talk about the uh, what were the outcomes for us uh, uh, when you participated. So uh, I should tell uh, that our project was not uh, only for the uh, youth. But we had a lot of other activities, and uh, there I think uh, Christine will uh, mention some of the activities during uh, our uh, 
COVID-19 situation. But uh, we are uh, here uh, talking about uh, youth. Why we focused on uh, youth? Looking uh, uh, for people that representative were, uh, they were more dependent at that time. Uh, and we uh, wanted to have uh, independency for uh, them. So we focused on youth uh, to come and uh, to, uh, to do some uh, something as they had uh, pride and they had energy and they, they wanted to work something, but they, they were afraid that they can, cannot do something. But we, a little bit, uh, so we supported them and they uh, did uh, much more for them. And now, uh, now we see that uh, mostly uh, the engagement and the participation uh, internally, they are in hand of youth. Uh, in the uh, informal settlements and uh, externally uh, still uh, there is a gap for uh, that uh, youth cannot uh, like uh, do uh, coordination of participation in external uh, factor like with authorities and other NGOs. Uh, so still uh, it needs uh, time. Uh, for the youth, uh, it has like uh, when they participated, so it it was uh, easy for us to manage to mobilize the uh, community uh, to solve their own problems by themselves. So when they participated, they uh, they are they are really encouraged, especially in the awareness raising campaign. When they were going to the uh, door by door, so people were accepting as they were a female and male, they, uh, their own uh, people, they were going and telling them that uh, we should do like this. So it, it was very uh, like uh, effective uh, during the COVID-19 situation as uh, they could uh, even uh, enter to the uh, houses as they were uh, from the community and female, uh, they were female as well with our uh, committee members with our uh, staff, they uh, they were going there. Uh, I could uh, tell that uh, in outcome reporting of us, like 87% of the uh, community was very happy from our program. So that was all from me. Uh, and we uh, why we were successful. Mm, this is this is our team uh, in Kabul Central area. And mostly uh, they are uh, young and they're, they're also youth. So uh, another committee were also uh, youth. So I will I will see if uh, you have any uh, comments or questions. Uh, we have two minutes, uh, so I can take that. If not, so thanks to you. For one minute, I can. <laughs> ask you guys if you have any question. Yeah, I'm checking. There was a question, um, Zeb, on uh, whether youth participation activities also help reintegrate um, like the group, like ex-child soldiers. Uh, soldiers, uh, as we are uh, here in central area, uh, like uh, there is no like this is a safe place. They are not, uh, they are far from the war zone. So mm. uh, somehow uh, can help them, but it can, uh, it help them mostly to uh, come to not to be uh, addicted to the drugs. Mm. But uh, in a war zone, it is difficult to say because uh, people who are living uh, in the centers, mostly they are far from the war zone and they are not uh, escaped from the war. So, uh, mm. Okay. We didn't uh, see any example like this. Yeah. Can I, can I ask your last one last minute? Can I ask, do you have any challenge in recruiting the right people? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it was a challenge because uh, mostly uh, community elders who were uh, from before, they didn't let uh, us, uh, even they were, uh, they were saying, they had a discussion with us that you are focusing on everyone. So this is not a, uh, right way. We are the leaders. We know everything. Just bring uh, things. We will uh, accept it. But you, when we, you, we were focusing on you, so they, they wanted to be independent and they wanted to solve their problem for for forever. They didn't want aid, but they wanted to do uh, the, the things by themselves. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Seth, for joining us today. Um, and for really, it's really good for me to see. I think engaging youth is one of the challenge that uh, we face often. Um, so thank you so much for joining. And uh, next I have